Welcome to Cinema Snapshots, a channel where we take a look at the latest films and their predecessors. We'll give you an in-depth look at what's new in the world of film and discuss the key elements of the films, from plot synopsis to the most memorable moments. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Alethea Binney is a British scholar who occasionally suffers from hallucinations of demonic beings. During a trip to Istanbul, Alethea purchases an antique bottle and unleashes the djinn trapped within it. The djinn offers to grant Alethea three wishes, so long as each one is truly her heart's desire, but Alethea argues that wishing is a mistake, accusing the djinn of being a trickster. Here's a movie trivia for you all. Did you know the name Alethea is named after Alethea the Greek goddess of truth and it is also known in Roman mythology as Veritas? In response, the djinn proceeds to tell her three tales of his past and how he ended up trapped in the bottle. The djinn tells the story of the Queen of Sheba, his cousin and lover, being wooed by King Solomon, who imprisons the djinn in a bottle which is cast into the Red Sea by a bird. Movie facts, did you know that is in the movie? Historical Jewish and Arab myths maintain that the Queen of Sheba was actually a jinn, half human and half demon, or else had a jinn mother. Now you know. Here's another movie trivia, did you know that in historical myths, King Solomon is purported to have dominion over jinn, even having a jinn army, jinn builders, and jinn advisors. Supposedly this was achieved with a magical ring he received from God which enables him to enslave demons. In the film, King Solomon can be seen wearing this ring when he casts the djinn into a bottle. Second story centers on Gulten, a concubine in the palace of Suleiman the Magnificent. After finding the djinn's bottle, Gulten wishes for Suleiman's son, Mustafa, to fall in love with her and subsequently wishes to bear his child. Hurram Sultan, a favored concubine of Suleiman, schemes to have her son on the throne and convinces Suleiman that Mustafa is conspiring against him. This results in Mustafa's murder. Despite the jinn's attempts to save her, the pregnant Gulten is also killed on Suleiman's orders before she can make her final wish. The jinn wanders the palace for over 100 years, invisible due to the concealment of the bottle. He almost captures the attention of Murad IV, but the latter goes to war and becomes a vicious and ruthless ruler, later dying from alcoholism. His brother Ibrahim becomes the new sultan and develops a fetish for obese concubines. His favorite among them, Sugar Lump, uncovers the bottle, whereupon the djinn appears to her and desperately begs her to make a wish. Sugar Lump thinks him a trickster and wishes for the djinn to be re-imprisoned in his bottle at the bottom of the Bosporus. In the djinn's final story, he tells of Sfire, the wife of a Turkish merchant, who is gifted the bottle after it is recovered in the mid-19th century. Sfire wishes first for knowledge, which the djinn grants in the form of literature, and later to perceive the world as genes do. Despite the jinn's growing affection for Sfire and the fact she is now pregnant with his child, she grows increasingly crowded by his presence and her newfound knowledge. The jinn offers to reside in his bottle whenever she wishes, but Sfire wishes to forget she met the jinn, leaving him imprisoned and unknown once again. The jinn's final story moves Alethea to the point where she wishes for jinn and herself to fall in love, resulting in them having sex. Afterwards, the Jinn and Alethea decide to travel back to London together. At the airport Alethea has placed the Jinn inside a salt shaker bottle and placed the bottle without the top in one pocket and the top in her other pocket which sets off the sensors when she goes through airport security. An airport security officer investigates the salt shaker by placing a pencil inside and then places the top on the bottle, which he sends through the x-ray machine despite Alethea's pleas. One day, Alethea discovers that the jinn is gradually becoming weaker due to the effects that the city's cell tower and satellite transmissions have when interacting with his electromagnetic physiology. She uses her second wish to get the severely ill jinn to speak again, apologizes for using her wish to deny them the chance to fall in love naturally, and uses her third and final wish to set the jinn free, so he is able to return to the realm of jinn. Though expecting never to see him again, the now healthy Jin visits Alethea three years later and periodically returns throughout her lifetime. Thank you for watching Cinema Snapshots. Subscribe to more videos like this, turn on notifications and leave a like to help this channel out.